the spirit like in the changing room after that game? I know it must be quite low just because it's such a tough loss, but like you said, for that young, hungry team getting so far, it must be something, you know, not ashamed to be ashamed of. No, it, it just it, it, uh, created a fire within us that we knew that even with a young team, we can still we can still reach reach for the impossible, and that was trying to make the grand final. Um, I know I know for a fact that uh, during the year a lot of boys were coming off contract and. Some of us players were trying to give up some of our money ourselves in order to retain those players. So that's that's how that's how important it was like for us players that we knew that we need we need this whole core group to stay together in order to succeed. Like players were willing to give up some of their salary in order to give it to other players in order for them to stay. Um, and some of us actually, you know, went to the went to the people in charge who do all of that, and they all just said, you know, like we we can't do that. Like legally, we can't do that. So um, yeah, it was a sad way to fall out, um, but it was a memorable year in total for for a lot of us. I mean, you had, a, you had a huge honour as well in 2016. You represented the New South Wales City in, in the traditional match against the New South Wales country, which is obviously now defunct. You came out 44-30 victors in that one, mate. But probably maybe a bit of an unexpected pick and it must be a huge honour to play in that game. Yeah, it was, I think it was the second to last New South Wales City and country game that was, that was uh, ever going to be held, so... Um, yeah, I, I was just happy to be part of the, uh, happy to be part of that whole camp, that whole weekend. Um, they had actually Tonga had actually rang me as well that weekend and said, "Oh, do you want to play for us?" And I said, "Nah, uh, I, I think I want to play for City." Um, and I apologised to the coach at the time, um, but yeah, it was just the whole. Just the whole atmosphere, being able to learn from Brad Fittler, um, just to see the in, ins and outs of of how he does things, just learn little things like before we would leave on the bus, we had to do uh, my, like my mindfulness talking, like meditation uh, before we left off before we left to go onto the field meditation just a lot of calmness a lot of a lot of keeping your mind at ease being able to control uh your body your emotions how you think and i think and i and i think like how you see new south wales play always they're always able to control uh the ball control the momentum uh the swing of things um they're never erratic and i, I think I think Brad Fittler is really smart at doing that, try, uh, getting the boys to be able to uh, be in control of their emotions, especially at origin, at origin level. Yeah. For the following season, obviously, Indigenous game rolls around again, you're back in the team. You had better fortunes this time in the 34, eight points to eight victory. And you came off the bench this time, you know, get another try. So that's pretty impressive. But you score in tries. But uh, this time you had blokes like JT and Blake Ferguson, Dane Gaga in the, in the change rooms, and obviously the, the up and coming and absolute superstar that the trail Mitchell is. Mm. Did you feel that you you know you raised your game to play these internationals, and yeah. you know having them just around you gives you a buzz and a feeling of like what you're going to do? Yeah. Well, ultimately, um, the the limelight of it was being able to play with JT. Yeah. Um, Everyone was in awe of him. Uh, everyone stopped speaking when he spoke. Um, whenever, whenever we had practice, uh, he it was the most I've ever heard anyone on the field talk. At one time, um, he was always just in control. This is where we're laying the post. We're laying the post here. We're getting. A Quick play of the ball there, and we're going to score over there. He just knew 
how to run the show on the field. Um, and when, when you've got someone like that who knows exactly what he wants, uh, it makes your job easier. It makes the whole team's job easier. Um, and till then, till then, I haven't, I haven't played with anyone who's, who's been like that. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, he's some, some talent, Ronnie. So the 2017 season were a bit different to the previous season. You know, you played 19 games, but all of them coming off the bench. Again, you scored two tries. I think you just like scoring tries at the minute. Uh, did you see yourself as an impact player or did you prefer starting the game? And if it's different to then, what do you see yourself as now? Uh, to be honest, back then, uh, I, 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 I didn't really see... Um, I didn't. I didn't. Re I didn't really have a choice of whether I wanted to start or come off the bench. It was the mere fact that I was still getting picked. Um, that that's that was the most important thing that I was just trying to get picked, and I, I didn't really care whether or not he wanted me to start or not. Um, uh, and and now and now coming over here, it, I, I've still got that same that same mindset. Um, He's picked me twice now to start, or three, uh, three times to start, and it, it's all been the same for me uh, coming over here. It's just more so trying to um, be in control, just trying to do as much as I can while I'm on the field. Yeah, um, and if I have to come off the bench, then I have to try and create impact or as much impact as I can. Um, yeah, that's always been my mindset, really, just to get peaked in the 17 each week. It's a very humble approach. Uh, so, obviously, you finished seventh that season and uh, you defeated Manly in the playoffs before losing to Brisbane, but unfortunately, you didn't you, know, you didn't get a run out in either. Was there a specific reason for that, re for you not having a run out? And how would you sum up that year for yourself? Uh, in, in 2017, it, it was like... There, there was some disappointing performances on, on my part. I spoke to Anthony Griffin about it. I um, was pretty emotional about it, just knowing full well that I was a better player than, than what I dished out. Um, and then it ended, it resulted in a, in a, in a, um, a, a jaw injury at the end of the year. So I ended up breaking my jaw against the Bulldogs and that sort of just ruled out uh, my chances of being able to play for Tonga or being able to be a part of the Tonga World Cup. Um, and that just sort of spoiled everything out. Like, that was the year that Andrew defected. Jason, Jason took all of the New Zealand players over to Tonga as well. Uh, Everything just sort of spiraled out, um, but yeah, it is what it is, really. Like, I, I was just glad that I got to play, I got to score a few tries, I got to represent Tonga mid year. Um, yeah, there was a there was a lot more highs than lows in that year. Yeah, I'm just about to come on to that. That will be the next point. You know you. You got to play for Tonga that year against Fiji and somehow, you know, you've got two more tries. It just seems like you're, you're scoring for fun here. You know, with 26 points to 24 victory, you know, playing in front of 18,000 people, that's that's a feat in itself. But that must have been a fantastic night for you and your family. What, yeah. what, what can you remember from that game? How did, what, what, how did you feel? What do you remember? Uh, well, I, I spoke to my dad. My dad was the first person that I rang when I... I got picked for Tonga and I said to him, look, I'm going to Tongan camp over the week. I said, they, they want me to play. And then he started crying. And then I started crying. And then the whole week leading into the game, uh, we had John Hopawadi there uh, teaching us hymns, teaching us the haka. We had the boys uh, teaching us the sipi, uh, the sipi tau. And uh, just all together um, as a collective, they we went one by one in a circle and basically 
John John Hopewadi said, "All right, everyone, stand up and uh, explain to the boys what it means to wear the Tongan jersey and who and 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 why it means a lot to you." And basically, for me, it was the f- it was um, the first time where I got to represent my dad and and my 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 Tongan my Tongan culture and for that for that it just meant the world to me that I got to finally put on a red jersey um, and there's like like there's a video that that's circulating around where someone's recording me and I had no had no idea it was happening but basically I just had my dad I just wrote dad on my wrist just before the before walking out of the tunnel onto the field and I just sort of break down broke down crying there because it was just a really emotional emotional time where um like it was something that I was really proud proud to be Tongan right at that moment that yeah, it was just an awesome feeling all up. But something I've noticed, Lalani, actually, I'm going to go off script a bit, actually. Previously, we've interviewed Peter Mataltia, and he's represented Samoa at, at that level as well. Something that I've noticed, um, we kind of, everyone from that side of the world, you know, like the Polynesian and indigenous community, compared to us, you know, Yorkshiremen and, and Englishmen, is you value culture and family as, you know, your kind of first part of call. Yeah. You know, Englishmen and Yorkshiremen are kind of like, obviously, we're very family oriented, but it's kind of work and, you know, drinking yeah. beer and, and getting on with stuff. As you've come over here and now embraced a bit of our culture, what do you think we're kind of missing? Um, that Because you, you guys are so passionate about life and, and you know, mindfulness and, and culture mm-hmm. and family. What do you think is, is a big difference? Excuse me. Um... To be honest, I, I'm, 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 I'm really not sure. To be honest, like back home, because of, because of my culture, it's always just been about what, like, like what you said. It, it, it's all just been about family, about, about everyone looking after each other. And I think it's because they brought that, they brought that mentality back from that small nation not to say that that Eng- england has that england has that um i think since me since me and my family have been here you know warrington and england in general have have been nothing but war- uh, warm and welcoming to us um it's it's just the I, i'm i'm yeah I, I don't know it's just the mere fact of uh realizing for myself that uh i've lived in more uh poor areas and so it's it's always it always plays in the back of my mind that these things like i i wouldn't be here or i wouldn't be in this place if it wasn't for certain family members, certain people. I think everyone's, everyone can be like that. Everyone can have that same family value. I think it's just the mindset that comes with it. For me, it's always been that um, I can relate this type of area, like England, to a more bigger picture of how I got here. Uh, if it wasn't for my parents, if it wasn't for my coaches, if it wasn't for my wife, um, yeah, I think that I think that sort of plays a big part in the Polynesian culture. Polynesian culture is just real strong with um, being able to give back to the people who have invested in us for so long in order to get us to where we are now, living a life that that we can enjoy for the time being. It's beautiful to listen to because, you know, you've got so much gratitude and, and you're very humble in general. And I think I wasn't, if for anyone listening, I wasn't talking down the auction or Englishman at all. Um, but it, it's just something I've noticed in general in, in many years, you know, yeah. if you travel in Australia myself and, and, and meeting these new type of blokes and stuff, but yeah. 
talking to you and, and Peter Matata is, is, is beautiful to listen to. Yeah. Um, you know, continuing, mate, 28.